Catolo de Baba, le badono colo de Bosique, le de Brina, Catolo de Baya, e Gabazo Tolo de Bruna, Catalana Maha. Father, we praise and bless the name of Jesus, and we thank you for the access that we have into the truth of your word. Therefore, being justified by faith tonight, we have peace with God, by whom we have access into this grace wherein we stand. We stand in this grace, and we access the deep things of God by the Holy Spirit. I pray for everyone connected to this service around the world. We decree that the eyes of each one's understanding be flooded with light. Veils fall off, your people built up, equipped, edified, Jesus glorified. Thank you that by the end of this service, we'll all be the better for it. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together again tonight as we say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. 
in Jesus name and every believer shouts that amen like thunder we want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and all of you that are connected in Aquaibom State on Comfort FM tonight. It's going to be a blast. You need to invite a friend, a family member. You need to grab somebody that you love very much to hook up to the broadcast tonight. We're going to have a great time in the word of his grace. All our house centers and all our campuses, we're glad to have every one of you tonight. It's going to be a wonderful time. Those on social media, please, all of you, help me share the video, tag some people, invite some people it's going to be a time of, of fellowship in the light of God's word all right grab your pen your notebook your bible you can be seated with your sweet smart self as we get into the word of his grace glory to God all right it's still soterious is in seven 30 days of glory 2020 all right let's get in the word we're looking at the legal and vital work of salvation the legal and vital work of salvation turn your bibles to the book of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1 Hebrews chapter 2 verse number 1. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep. And yesterday I told you it is not the word that sleeps it is we that drifts away. Lest at any time we should drip, drift away. Next verse. Next verse. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast. And every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward under angels' dispensation. Next verse. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? So we establish that there is the salvation that came from the Lord. And that there is the law of Moses that was given in response to the hardness of men's heart. And he says, how shall we escape from the law of Moses and its consequences if we neglect the salvation that was given to us by the Lord Jesus? So we've been looking at this almighty subject, this great subject, this subject that forms the fulcrum, the center part of the scriptures. And we began to establish that yesterday. Now. We said that Jesus is the word and the word is God. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Verse 14. And the word became flesh. The word became flesh. That is God became a man. The word became flesh or God became a man and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the father. Full of grace and truth. So the word became a man please pay attention so we began to talk about the fact that the scriptures tells us that the pre-incarnate god took the form of flesh and became a man the word which was god became a man or became flesh or the pre-incarnate the pre-incarnate genomide or change shape and location and became a man jesus is god who became a man for the purpose of salvation. So he became a man, spirit, soul, and body. If he was just a man in his body, that is not a man. You are not a man just because you have a physical body. That's not what makes you a man. If he was just a man in his soul, that is not, just a, that is not a man. So he was man in his spirit. That is why he is man in his soul. And he is man in his body. He was God that became man. And like I established, Jesus is 100% God as though not man. And 100% man as though not God. And when he walked the face of the earth, he functioned 100% as a man. So Jesus is 100% God in the sense that he had a pre-incarnate state of God. Which he abandoned and laid aside. All right? He had a pre-incarnate status as God which he abandoned and laid aside. And if you cannot become man in the spirit, then you are not man. Look at Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Pay attention. King James Version. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Next verse. Who being in the form of God taught it not robbery to be equal with God. Next verse but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Verse 8. 
and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Give me the, 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 the message translation and then you will give me the mirror translation. Give me the message translation of the same Philippians 2 from verse 5 to 8. Think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. Next verse. He had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Verse 7. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave, became human, became human, verse 8. Having become human, he stayed human. I hope you're observing. Having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death. And the worst kind of death at that, a crucifixion. Give me the mirror translation. The mirror translation. The way Jesus saw himself is the only valid way to see yourself. Next verse. His, his being God's equal in form and likeness was official. His sonship did not steal the limelight from his father. Neither did his mankind distract from the deity of God. Next verse. His mission, however, was not to prove his deity, but to embrace our mankind. Emptied of his reputation. Go back to verse 7. Emptied of his reputation as God. He fully embraced our physical human form. Next verse. And so we have the drama of the cross in context, the man, Jesus Christ, who is fully God, becomes fully man. The man, Jesus Christ, who is fully God, becomes fully man to the extent of willingly dying mankind's death at the hands of his own creation. So Jesus is fully man. Fully man. Pay attention. So when he died... He rose as a man. Like I said yesterday, from conception to redemption, to exaltation, to the right hand of the Father, he is not God, he is man. He is man. Because that is actually the plan of redemption. Now, look at 1 Corinthians 15.25, the King James. 1 Corinthians 15.25 For he must reign, talking about Jesus, Till he had put all enemies under his feet. Next verse. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Next verse. For he had put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him. It is manifest that he is exempted. Accepted. Which did put all things under him. Next verse. And when all things shall be subdued under him, please pay attention. When all things shall be subdued under him, then shall the son also be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. All right, please pay attention. But that will only happen at the end of the age when all things have been put under him. Give me the mirror translation of that First Corinthians 15. The mirror translation of 1 Corinthians 15, 25. Resurrection life will finally... Go back, go back, go back. Resurrection life... Resurrection life will finally triumph over every definition of death. Next verse. Next verse. His dominion is destined to subdue all hostility and contradiction under his feet. Next verse. Glory to God. Next verse. Next verse. Glory to God. Next verse. I need the next verse. <clears throat> First Corinthians 15, 26, 27. I need that translation because I love the way that translation puts it. Alright, give me the message of that same scripture. First Corinthians 15, 25 to 27 of the... Alright, you have it now. No? 
No, no, go back to verse 28. 28. Or 27. 27 then. Give me 27. First Corinthians 15, 27. When David says in Psalm 8 that mankind is destined to reign over all things, he obviously does not mean that mankind will also rule over their maker. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse, next verse, next verse. Okay, give me the message, message translation of First Corinthians 15, 25 to 27. Message translation, message translation because of time. He won't let up until the last enemy is down. Next verse, 26. And the very last enemy is death, 27. As the psalmist said, he laid them low one and all. He walked all over them. When scripture says that he walked all over them, it's obvious that he couldn't at the same time be walked on. Next verse, 28 now. When everything and everyone is finally under God's rule. Please pay attention. When everything and everyone is finally under God's rule, the sun will step down, taking his place with everyone else. Showing that God's rule is absolutely comprehensive. A perfect ending. Now, there's a reason why I took time to read that. So, he tells you that he will deliver all things to the Father. And he says everything is under him except God himself. So, as it is today, Jesus is not back as God. Because the age is still running. He will remain a man until all things are subdued. He will remain a man until the end of the age. That is the full weight of redemption. A man at incarnation, a man at death, a man at burial, a man at resurrection, a man at glorification, and a man seated right now at the right hand of majesty on high. Please pay attention. This is very important. So when he became flesh, he became a man. Are we doubting his pre-incarnate existence? No, not at all. Because if you can fault his pre-incarnate existence, you fault the entire redemption plan. So, it was God that became a man. The Bible says in Isaiah 7, 14, A virgin shall bring forth a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, or God be with us. Emmanuel or God with us. God with us. Now when he says God with us, you think of being with somebody, but that's not what he means. When he says God with us, he means someone who had a pre-incarnate existence as God has become a man and is with us. Has become a man and is with us. That is Today, in mankind, we have someone who came in because of us. And he is now like us. He came in, he was not part of us. But he came in because of us. And now he is with us and like us. That is the meaning of God with us. It is not talking about his presence. He is talking about the essentiality of the being of Jesus as man that is jesus is a man in his being he is a man in his being so if you look at jesus today he is a man right now spirit soul and body so he is a man in all the areas that makes a man man now let's adventure into the spirit when we refer to spirit people always believe that a spirit or a spirit being will be an omnipresent personality. When we say spirit, people always believe that spirit beings are omnipresent. Please pay attention. I have always said that angels are not omnipresent. And they are spirit beings. Angels are spirit beings, but they are not everywhere. They are not omnipresent. That means... In the study of three personalities in creation, every spirit has a limit. 
there is a limit or a bound set on all of God's creations. In the book of Luke chapter 16, Jesus told the story of Abraham and Lazarus and the rich man. Notice that what Father Abraham said to Lazarus, when Lazarus said, Father Abraham, ask Lazarus to take water and cool my tongue. Father Abraham said, there is a gulf between us and you. You cannot come to us and we cannot come to you. All right, that means there is a limit or spirits are not everywhere or spirit beings can only be in a location. If you remember, when Jesus rose from the dead, he said, go and wait till I come. He didn't say, I am where you are. Even when he rose with the glorified body, he had to go to where they were. Meaning, in his resurrection, he could only stay in a location. He could not be everywhere because he's a man. And a man cannot be everywhere. A man can only be in one place at one time. So when Jesus rose from the dead to validate that he was a man, he couldn't be everywhere. He had to go and meet them in the room. He had to go and meet them wherever they were because he was, he was a full-fledged man. Please stay with me. Now the same thing brother Paul will say. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 1. Give me that. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse number 1. It is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Next verse. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God know it. Such an one caught up. Caught up to the third heaven. Caught up to a location. Caught up. Such a one caught up. So even in his spiritual experience, he had to be taken to a location. There's a reason why you must pay attention to that. So obviously, he was having encounters with the God kind, but there was a location. God created man and put man in a location. So spirit beings or the spirit man has a location. The spirit man has a location. Just like Jesus. Jesus today, listen carefully. Jesus today is not in you. The only person that can say Jesus was in is Mary. He was in the womb of Mary. Conception for incarnation. So when we say Jesus is in you, we are referring to the Holy Spirit. When we say Jesus is in you, we are referring to the Holy Spirit. Please listen carefully. Christ in you is a reference to the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Jesus. The Holy Spirit. Every vision people have ever had about Jesus is actually the Holy Spirit manifesting the person of Jesus to people. Jesus is seated at the regency on high because he is a man. He cannot be omnipresent because spirits have location. Spirits have location. You are located somewhere. Jesus for 33 and a half years was located on earth. When he died, he said expressly, I go to my father. I go to my father. Please pay attention. Now, so he is now located at the right hand of God. And he has not come back to earth for over 2,000 years because he is functioning as a man. He is functioning as a man. Therefore, he has not come to the earth. Demonstrating his humanity, he says, No one knows the day nor the hour, not even I or the angels, but my father is a confirmation to his status as a man. A man in his body. So hence, he was anointed of the Holy Spirit to know things supernaturally, to say things supernaturally, and to do things supernaturally. So there's a location. What I mean in essence is 
Jesus is located in heaven, the immaterial. In heaven, the immaterial. The Holy Spirit, who is God. The Holy Spirit, who is God, is located in us and among us. And the Holy Spirit is located all over the earth. He is located in us, among us, and all over the earth. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit now. That's why today, people all over the world can receive the Holy Spirit. But you see, when it comes to Jesus, Jesus is in heaven. He is not on earth. He left earth. The angel said it clearly. He's gone and in the same manner he will come. Alright? So he is not on earth. He is in heaven. This helps you to know what I'm going to say in the next few minutes. Many of the things believe or many people believe that Jesus, you know, was, was God on earth. But that's not true. He was not God on earth. On earth he was man. Philippians 2.5 says he stripped himself of all privileges and responsibilities. He removed everything that makes him God. He took it all out. Please stay with me. So on earth, he was not God. He was a complete man. We just read it in Philippians 2, 5 to 8. He means he is God. God made manifest in humanity. God made manifest in humanity. Look at 1 John chapter 4 verse 1. Give me the amplified, I mean the King James, then we will look at the mirror. 1 John chapter 4 verse 1. <clears throat> this then, please listen carefully. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try, try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Next verse. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is a man is of God. Very critical, very, very vital scripture. Give me the mirror translation of those two verses. The mirror translation of 1 John chapter 4 verse 1 and 2. The mirror translation. 1 John chapter 4 verse 1 and 2. Glory to God. And if you can't find the mirror, give me the message translation. 1 John chapter 4 verse 1 and 2. My dear friends, don't believe everything you hear. Carefully weigh and examine what people tell you. Not everyone who talks about God comes from God. There are a lot of lying preachers loose in the world. There are a lot of lying preachers loose in the world. And listen carefully, just pause, come back to me, we will go back again. That's why the Bible says, if you hear another Jesus. So there is another Jesus. He talks about another spirit. Then he talks about another gospel. So, the kind of gospel preached will determine which Jesus is called. And it will determine which spirit is in oppression. So that you enter a place and people are falling and screaming and people are shouting Jesus, you need to ask which one? Which one? Because Jesus is not only Jesus. There are Jesuses. There is another Jesus. There is another spirit. So that people are shouting and falling and vomiting and rolling like snakes on the floor doesn't mean it's Jesus Jesus, the man that is in operation. Bible says there are lying preachers, many in the world. So how do we know which one is Jesus and which one is another Jesus? He said they will be known by the gospel they preach. So another gospel will be the basis for the operation of another spirit, which will be the basis for the operation of another Jesus. Very important because 
There are all kinds of things going on out there and you must be grounded to be able not to fall a victim to deception. So instead of being carried away by spirit, carried away by Jesus, check the message. The key to determining what is in operation is the message. You know, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 16, the Bible says Paul came to a city and a young girl began to follow them and she was prophesying. And you know, in our society, people like prophecy too much. And that is why so many people are victims in the hands of familiar spirits and enchantment and, and spells. They like, they, like, they like all kinds of this prophecy, prophecy, prophecy all over the place. Now, that is not to say prophecy is not good, but prophecy must never be exalted above the written word of God. Never. I have told you. When the words of your pastor are superior to the written word of God, you are in idol worship. So this girl was following Paul, the apostle, and she was prophesying. And here the prophecy, correct prophecy. These men be the servants of the most high. Correct. Which show us the way of salvation. Correct. The prophecy was accurate. Somebody said to me, Dr. Damira, the guy prophesies accurately. I said, that is not an issue. That's not an issue. Native doctors also prophesy accurately. That it is right doesn't mean it is correct. That the man is giving you accurate details of your phone number, house address. First of all, you must be stupid to look for a man of God in the spirit to tell you your phone number. Because phone number is not revelation. Revelation is not, phone number is MTN or Airtel. That's not a sign that God is in operation. So now, Brother Paul was moving and this girl was prophesying and following them around. And if it's today's Christians, they have already submitted. They have already bowed down to that stupid spirit. Brother Paul said the, the girl was following them for days and prophesying accurately. But after a while, Brother Paul became uncomfortable by the spirit operating in her. So brother Paul turned and said, you unclean spirit out. And the evil spirit left the girl. And the Bible says the girl was possessed by the spirit of soothsaying. And by soothsaying, she had made profit for her masters. So that prophecy was an enterprise. It was a business for making money. That is why as a believer, your first target is not the gifts of the spirit. Your first target is to be grounded in the word of God. Brother Paul says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. People that follow signs will always end up victims. Jesus said, an evil generation seek for sign. So anybody that is always running around for miracle, miracle, miracle. Jesus calls him an evil generation. And then Jesus said, and none shall be given to them except the sign of Jonas. What is the sign of Jonas? Death, burial, and resurrection, which is a message. Which is the gospel. Which is the message of the truth about Jesus. And that is why people that stay in the word of God is very difficult to take them around. Brother Paul says that we henceforth be no more toes to and fro and carried about, carried about by every wind of doctrine and the craftiness of men who lie in wait to deceive. Friends, we are in very perilous times. You must understand that what makes you a Christian it's not prophecy and falling on the ground. It is the message of Christ that you receive in simplicity and you seek to grow in the knowledge of. So get back to that scripture. First John chapter 4 verse 1 again. Message translation. My dear friends, don't believe everything you hear. Carefully weigh and examine what people tell you. Not everyone who talks about God comes from God. There are a lot of lying preachers loose in the world. All right, next verse. <clears throat> Here is how you test. Here is how you test for the genuine spirit of God. Everyone who confesses openly his faith in Jesus Christ, the son of God, who came as an actual flesh and blood person, comes from God. And belongs to God. 
That is once you accept the humanity of Christ, you are born of God. That is why since I started teaching yesterday, I've been making emphasis on the humanity of Christ. Give me verse 3 of that 1 John chapter 4. Verse 3, message translation. 1 John 4, 3, message translation. We will come back to mirror. Message translation. 1 John 4, verse 3. And everyone who refuses to confess faith in Jesus has nothing in common with God. This is the spirit of Antichrist. So like I've been saying, Antichrist is not a man, it's a spirit, it's a teaching. This is the spirit of Antichrist that you heard was coming. Well, here it is, sooner than we thought. So the Antichrist is not 5G. The Antichrist has been a spirit from the days when the book of 1 John was written. It has been a spirit from that time. Now let me give you another acid test for checking whether it is of God or not. 2 John chapter 1 verse 8. Give me the King James Version. 2 John chapter 1 verse number 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Next verse. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth abided not in the doctrine of Christ, the teaching of Christ, the message of Christ, the word doctrine, the message of Christ, put it up, hath not God. How do I know a man that doesn't have God? What is he teaching? What is he teaching? If he's teaching motivation, that is already a sign that you should check him again. If he's teaching business skills in the name of gospel, it's a sign you should check him again. If his emphasis on miracles, it's a sign you should check him again. What is the acid test for God? Put the scripture up again. Whosoever transgressed and abided not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. The word abide means that is what you preach all the time. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he had both the Father and the Son. Give me the message of that scripture, verse 8 and 9. Message translation. And be very careful around them, so you don't lose out on what we have worked so diligently in together. I want you to get every reward you have coming to you. Verse 9 now. Anyone who gets so progressive in his thinking that he walks out on the teaching of Christ, walks out on God. But whosoever stays with the teaching, stays faithful to both the Father and the Son. Give me mirror. First John chapter 4 verse 1. Mirror translation. Beloved, do not be swayed by everything that seems spiritual. Or prophetic. Just like with costly metals. There is a reliable test. Just like it is a test. That will show you gold. From bronze. It is with test. You will not diamond from an ordinary rock. You have to test it. You can't just know it with your eyes. They don't know gold with eyes. It has to be tested. So that people are falling and shouting and prophesying shouldn't swear you because there is a yardstick for testing whether it is God or an evil spirit or familiar spirit in oppression. Give me verse 2 now. Verse 2. Let's see the test. Glory to God. First John 4 2. Mirror translation. There are many false prophets who come and go in the religious world system. They might even sound very inspirational and carry a Christian label. This does not mean that God is their source of insight. They carry a spiritual label. This does not mean that God is the source of their insight. Give me verse 3 now. Verse 3. Glory to God. This is how you discern the spirit of God. The incarnation. Kabatomenda. The incarnation is the central theme of the communication of the spirit. The incarnation that God is a man. 
the fact that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is what gives legitimacy to every prophetic word. Glory to God. I'm teaching good tonight. If I'm teaching good, shout, I hear you. I say, shout, I hear you. All right. So people falling is not a sign of power. Somebody said to me, Dr. Damina, why don't you operate in power? So I asked him, what is power? He said, falling, shouting, screaming. I said, no, that's not power. Anybody can fall, anybody can shout, anybody can scream. Power is word. Where the word of a king is, there is power. So the teaching of God's word is the demonstration of power. The doctrine, the message is what conveys the power. What does the Bible say? Mark 16, 20. And the Lord was walking with them, confirming his word. So what God confirms is his word. What does the Bible say in Luke chapter 5 verse 15? They came to hear and be healed. They came to hear and be healed. What does the Bible say in Luke chapter 5 verse 17? He said, on a certain day, there were doctors of the law sitting by. And as Jesus kept teaching, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Why? Because God's word is the regulator of God's power. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? It is the power. I Power is not falling down. Power is the message. Let me shock you. You will not find anywhere in the four gospels as Jesus was walking on it as the incarnate where anybody fell down. There's no record of anybody falling. I'm not against falling. But again, falling is not an indication of power. Neither is it an indication of God. There's no record. Look at the entire Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In Jesus' earthly ministry, nobody fell. The only time anybody fell was when they came to arrest him. He shook his body, they fell because it was not yet time. Outside that, you won't find it anywhere. Why? Because God's power is within the confines of his word. The more of his word you know, the more empowered you become. The believer is not outside in. The believer is inside out. Listen carefully. The spectacular is not necessarily the supernatural. I repeat. The spectacular is not necessarily the supernatural. So go back again to 1 John. I want that mirror translation. 1 John chapter 4 verse 2 and 3. 1 John mirror translation. 1 John chapter 2 verse 4 and 3. There are many false prophets. Who come and go in the religious world system. Like in some countries where prophets give people snake to eat. They give them alcohol to drink and get drunk. Then they now tell them power is moving. They start falling under the power of alcohol. They give people petrol to drink. Engine oil to drink. That is obviously not God. The people are under a spell. That can be the gospel. The gospel of Christ saves men. It saves men. Put that scripture back. There are many false prophets who come and go in the religious world system. They might even sound very inspirational. Any message in the name of gospel that is not revealing Jesus and that is not focused on Jesus, beware of it. Beware of it. Believers are not built by inspiration. Believers are built by the revelation of Jesus. So they might even sound very inspirational and carry a Christian label. This does not mean that God is their source of insight. Next verse. This is how you discern the spirit of God. The incarnation is the central theme of the communication of the spirit. The fact that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is what gives legitimacy to every prophetic word. Next verse 3 now. Verse 3 of the same First John chapter 4. Verse 3, mirror translation. Verse 3, mirror translation. First John chapter 4 verse 3. 
Glory to God. And if you're finding it difficult to locate, give me the message, verse 3 of 1 John chapter 4. 1 John 4, 3, King, I mean, message translation. 1 John chapter 4, verse 3. And everyone who refuses to confess faith in Jesus has nothing in common with God. This is the spirit of Antichrist that you heard was coming. Well, here it is. Sooner than we thought. So he came how? In the flesh. If you cannot acknowledge the humanity of Jesus, you are preaching a false gospel. If you cannot acknowledge the humanity of Jesus, you are preaching a false gospel. In acknowledging his divinity, you will only acknowledge his pre-incarnate state. But when he came as a man, he was a man. He died a man. Buried a man. Rose a man. Today, he is a man. So, there is a man in the Godhead. There is a man in the Godhead. He didn't die as God. He died as man. Spirits that is not God has a location. Look at Hebrews chapter 10 verse 10. Glory to God. King James Version. Hebrews 10, 10. King James Version. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the blood of Jesus Christ once for all. Next verse. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Next verse. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down. What did he do? Sat down. Where? On the right hand of God. Next verse. 13. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. So it talks about the fact that Jesus was given a body. And he is sitting as a man at the right hand of God. That's the location of Jesus. Having said that, Jesus is man, spirit, soul, and body. He was conceived of the Holy Ghost. His birth. That he was not the Holy Ghost. He grew up as a man. And the Holy Ghost came upon him and anointed him. God was with him. Referring to the Holy Spirit. So that same Jesus is who we are about to talk about today and tomorrow. That Jesus is who we are about to talk about as a man, spirit, soul, and body. Look at Galatians chapter 1 verse 4. Pay attention. Very critical. Galatians 1 4. Who gave himself for our sins? That he might deliver us from this present evil world. According to the will of God and our father. So what did he give? He gave himself. First Timothy 2, 5 and 6. First Timothy 2, 5 and 6. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man. The man... Christ Jesus. Next verse. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So Jesus gave himself. If he gave his body, will he say he gave himself? No. Because your body is not your totality. Romans 8.32 explains further. Romans 8.32 he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he, how shall he not, not with him also freely give us all things? So what was given to us is the son. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son but whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
He gave his only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son. Please pay attention. So he gave himself spirit, soul, and body. Let's get into the study a bit more. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. Give me the mirror translation. First Timothy chapter 2 verse number 5. The mirror translation. I love that translation. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. Glory to God. Glory to God. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. If that is taking too much time, give me the King James Version. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man, Christ Jesus. Next verse. Next verse. Who gave himself, what did he give? Himself, a ransom, the word ransom for all, to be testified in due time. Now look at what I'm, we're dealing with here. For example, when there is a kidnap, or when somebody is kidnapped, the people that kidnap him will call his people. And they will say, your person is with us. Give us two million naira before we release him, for example. All right? Now, a ransom is what you pay for that person to be released. So a ransom is a price you pay to free a slave or to change a circumstance or to change the ownership of something. It is the price paid. And why it was paid is because that is what determines salvation. So looking at salvation from the value of it will be the ransom that was paid. What is the value of salvation? The ransom that was paid. What was paid? The price is one person. One person. First Corinthians 1.30, King James Version. First Corinthians 1.30. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Jesus was made unto us redemption. Underline that word, redemption. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Christ hath redeemed, underline the word redeemed, hath redeemed us from the cause of the law. Be made a cause for us, for it is written, Caused is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. So he became a cause. Christ has redeemed us all. Christ has paid. So Christ is the price that was paid. Let's look at some words. Please pay close attention. Let's look at some words used for the word redemption. Let's do some word study. The word redemption. The Greek word for the word redemption is the word exogorazo. Exogorazo. Exogorazo implies to buy something. To buy something. It deals with the price of something. What was paid for that thing. Exogorazo. The price of something. For example, I bought this microphone with exogorazo. I bought this car with exogorazo. So exogorazo is the price. There's another word I'd like you to write down. is the word Lutheran. Lutheran. The word Lutheran deals with the consequences of the payment. The consequences of the payment. That is, it goes beyond what was paid and deals with the circumstance of the payment. 
the circumstance of the payment. Luthro. Luthro. Then there's another word, luthrosis. Luthrosis. Because the word luthro is from there you get the word luthrosis. Luthrosis refers to the release. It refers to the release. What came out of the price that was paid? What came out of the price that was paid? Then there's another word, apolotrosis. Apollo, apolotrosis. It refers to the things that accrued because of the price paid. The things that accrued because of the price paid. So these are the words. Exagorazo, what was paid. Luthro, Luthro, the consequences of the payment. Luthro sees the release as a result of the payment. Apollotro sees the things that accrued because of the price paid. I'm going to read a verse or two and close. Galatians 3.13 deals with the price paid. The price paid. Exogarazo. Galatians 3.13 Christ hath redeemed us. Okay, the mirror translation. Christ redeemed us from the cause as consequence of our failure to keep the law. In his cross, he concentrated the total cause of the human race upon himself. In his abandoning himself to death, he absorbed and dissolved the horror of the cause in his own person. Scripture declares that anyone hanging on a tree embodies the cause. That is the price paid. So Christ is the price paid. Titus 2.14 Deals with the effect. Titus 2.14 Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works that deals with being redeemed from vain conversation or aimless conduct. Then look at Lutrosis, Hebrews 9.12. Lutrosis, Hebrews 9.12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption. Eternal redemption. So, Lutrosis, is the word there. The consequences of what was paid is till eternity. Eternal redemption. The consequences of what was paid is till eternity. It was, it will not be paid again. This price paid makes it impossible to change the owner. It makes, that is why it is eternal. It deals with the consequences of the price paid. It has eternal consequences. Hebrews 9.15, last scripture. Hebrews 9.15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance, eternal life, eternal redemption, eternal inheritance. That is the word apolotrosis. People had committed sins under the old covenant and he paid the price for what they had done. So because of that, even the Old Testament people who believed received the promise of eternal inheritance. That is, these people will not be changed again. For what they have done, they will not be charged. Under that dispensation, whatever wrong they did 
when Jesus died, he took away the charges. It was written by law. If you do this, this will happen. Jesus comes, pays the price, and by the payment of the price, releases the slave, releases the prisoner, acquits him, and discharges him without prejudice. Because the freedom of the slave was on perfect legal ground. And he was freed eternally, which implies that his honor can never be changed. That is why salvation is eternal. Eternal life, eternal redemption, eternal inheritance, eternal salvation. Nothing temporal. I mean, think about it. How can a permanent God, an eternal God, give you a temporal product as a result of his resurrection? It's not possible. Salvation is eternal, predicated on what Christ has done. Stand on your feet. That's all I've got for you tonight. Father, I pray for everybody all over the world, in our house centers, campuses, online, revelation knowledge of these realities that forms the basis for our rest, the basis for our triumph, the basis for our authority, the basis for us to reign in life, that these realities will dawn in the consciousness of everyone connected to this service. Mental blockades broken. Mental cages terminated. Revelation knowledge rises big on your inside until nothing else matters. I thank you, Father, for answered prayer in Jesus' precious name. And every believer in this building shouts that amen on a note of finality. Glory to God. Listen to me, friends. We're about to switch over to the next segment where we shall answer questions and interact with you by way of phone call. Don't go away. And if you know people that have been disturbing you with questions and bothering you, ask them to hook on and share fellowship with us in the light of God's word. In another two minutes, we'll be on in the other studio with Mr. Michael Bush, who is already in the house. Good to have you, man. What a blessing tonight. Now, grab your offerings. We want to give in honor of the word. We want to give in honor of what Christ has done. Grab a good offering, everybody, wherever you are. Online, the banking details are scrolling in the house centers and campuses. We want to pray over your offerings tonight. We give in honor. We give in worship. And we give because we have an understanding that it is our responsibility to flood the nations of the earth with the gospel of Christ. And I want to thank all of you that have been giving and supporting the, the program. I really, tr you know, truly appreciate you. And I pray for you all the time. You never lack. You will always have sufficiency. Lift your offerings of Father. Thank you for the privilege of giving tonight. We give in faith. We give with joy. And we thank you for the privilege of making a difference in the advancement of the gospel. And as we give tonight, we thank you that our offering is a sweet smell. Thank you for the blessing over your people tonight. And we give you praise that everyone giving, your needs are met according to his riches in glory. Receive ideas and favors and supernatural opportunities. Great grace is upon you tonight. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. Praise God. Thank you again for giving to the Lord. And I want you to know we're going to go to the other segment right now. And this conference continues every day of this week, 6 to 8 p.m. Live here on Comfort FM, on all the social media handles, Kingdom Life Network, and every platform through which the gospel is going out through this ministry. We love you guys. We're excited. And I look forward to catching you on the other side. Let's celebrate viewers as we celebrate what Christ has done in their hearts. Glory we to God. Woo! Amen. By this message. For these, all the messages and books by Dr. Abel Damina, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com. Jesus is the exclusive custodian. Jesus is the sole carrier. Jesus is the perfect imprint, the pleroma, the corporate headquarters of the Godhead. Jesus is the executive carrier of the Father. So if you don't know Jesus, you don't know the Father. You can never know the Father outside of Christ. Church in the air and church online. So Join 
Drs. Abel and Rachel Damien as he brings you sound Bible study through the month of July and 30 days of glory 2020. Exegetically examining the fundamentals of the Christian faith. Salvation in Christ. Date from 5th of July to 2nd of August 2020. Time 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. from Mondays to Saturdays, 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. on Sundays. Book up live on our Facebook and YouTube page and also live on Kingdom Life Network TV on My TV or Strong Decoder and live on Comfort FM Uyo by 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Mondays to Saturdays and 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Sunday. Also listen to a rebroadcast of the services daily on XL FM 106.9 Uyo. 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. daily and live on Inspiration FM 105.9 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. daily. Be a part of this program. Don't miss it. This is forever. Never seen love like this, love so great to rescue me. You paid the price for me, cared for me, set me free. We've been made alive, thanks to Jesus who gave his life. Nothing can be like it, no one can do more than that. You gave me power to spread the fragrance of your grace. I am Jesus is the exclusive custodian. Jesus is the sole carrier. Jesus is the perfect imprint, the pleroma, the corporate headquarters of the Godhead. Jesus is the executive carrier of the Father. So if you don't know Jesus, you don't know the Father. You can never know the Father outside of Christ. Church in the air and church online. Join Drs. Abel and Rachel Damien as he brings you sound Bible study through the month of July and 30 days of glory 2020. Exegetically examining the fundamentals of the Christian faith. Salvation in Christ. Date from 5th of July to 2nd of August 2020. Time 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. from Mondays to Saturdays, 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. on Sundays. Book up live on our Facebook and YouTube page and also live on Kingdom Life Network TV on My TV or Strong Decoder and live on Comfort FM Uyo by 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Mondays to Saturdays and 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Sunday. Also listen to a rebroadcast of the services daily on XL FM 106.9 Uyo. 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. daily and live on Inspiration FM 105.9 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. daily. Be a part of this program. Don't miss it. Good afternoon from Uyo. It's good evening wherever you are. It's from Nigeria. And we're here at the global headquarters of Power City International in Uyo, Akwaibum State, Nigeria. Good afternoon for people in different parts of the world, just making sure we can acclimatize very well with you. My name is Michael Bush. I'm so happy to welcome you to day nine of 30 Days of Glory. And um, right now, I need to tell us that we are in the second part. Papa is here. My privilege to have him. As always, the Reverend Dr. Abel Damina. Mr. Bush, so good to have you again Papa, today. So, so nice. So, what so a nice. joy, what a blessing. Okay, Papa, let's set the stage. We've already have lost some 12 minutes, so we're trying to make this as snappy as we can. I start with what started yesterday, that's the quiz. Um, every week we're going to be giving you a question, and the one for this week is the translation of sin. Is it of Moses because he gave the law, true or false? And you're supposed to explain that in a few words and send answers to 30 days of glory at gmail.com. I'd like to report that we have a truckload of um, emails, some, some answers coming from as far as far as UK. I'm not going to put out the answers so that um, I don't discourage others or I don't teach others what to say. But Sophie in Berkshire 
United Kingdom, we'd like to thank you. Billy David doesn't say where he's writing from. We'd also like to thank you. Mimi Okwara doesn't say again where she's writing from. And then there's an anonymous entry. You can't do that to yourself. The moment you enter for this quiz, please include your name and where you're writing from. Having said so, Papa, welcome to the second part. Thank and you. without any further ado, can we get down? The first question tonight, I'm not asking any of my own until we progress. I just um, will hand over the microphone to you. Your name is Anethi Okinyang. You say you are in Ibiono, which is um, in Akwaibum State. Say, Papa, Jesus said, except you repent, you shall die in your sin. Luke 13, 35. Now, I believe in Jesus, yet I have not repented. What happens to my salvation? Well, first of all, you've got to define the word repentance. The word repentance, if you observe, was only mentioned in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You will see that word not used in the epistles. And the reason is very simple. The word repentance means metanoia. It means to change your mind, change your thinking. You cannot repent before you meet Jesus. You can only repent after you meet Jesus. It's like somebody told me a lot of bad things about Mr. Bush. It is only when I meet Mr. Bush that I will change my mind if what I experience is contrary to what I was told. So you don't repent before you meet Jesus. It's after you've met Jesus and experienced him that you change your mind. So repentance is not before believing. It is as a result of believing that you now make the adjustment in your thinking. So that's what repentance means. From Nigeria, we head to Kenya, where Eunice is waiting for us, and she says, Papa, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, 14, for God will bring every work unto judgment, including every secret thing, good or evil. Please explain. I thought God does not keep record of wrong, plus we are a new creation. Well, he's talking about works. Works, works of ministry. The things you do in the body. Serving the Lord, serving the brethren, your motive, your intents will be tested so that you can be rewarded. It is called the Bema seat or the judgment seat of Christ. It's not a reward for salvation. It's a reward for service. There are two things in the Bible that are different in the New Testament. Salvation is not service. Service is not salvation. It's like when you read scriptures that say, I put my body under. Lest after I preach to others, I will be a castaway. In, in 1 Corinthians 9, Paul was not talking about salvation as castaway. He was talking about castaway is the word disqualified. Lest I be disqualified from the reward of doing ministry. So again, the judgment there is judgment for works, ministry, and service in the body of Christ. From Kenya, let's head to the UK where Chris Seshe is waiting. And he writes, hello, Mr. Bush, thank you for doing such a great job. Papa, thank you for your labor and directing us in this great knowledge of Christ. In the book of Genesis, we know that Adam did not trust God. Hence, he chose the tree of death. This means Adam died spiritually. In the New Testament, the Pauline doctrine always makes reference to the believer being dead in Christ. We're buried with him in his death. Does this mean, Papa, that the believer died twice, the death of Adam's? which by, was by his choice, and the death of Christ in his burial? Well, the death of Christ was actually identification with the state that the man who is not born again was in already as a result of the fall of Adam. The man that is not born of God, or everybody that until Jesus died, everybody was in a spiritual state of death, including the Old Testament people who believed in the promise. It was after Jesus rose from the dead that those who believe in the promise were given life. And it's after he rose from the dead that he now made life available to those who believe. So the believer died once in sin, but in the death of Christ, the believer came alive. That's what it means. Okay, Papa, from Europe, let's run to the United States. Um, Michael is waiting for us at um, Seattle in Washington. Thank you, Papa, for the wonderful teachings you always bring. Please, Papa, as New Testament Christians, are we to practice um, feet washing and blood sprinkling? Are there any of your teachings on this? It's, doctrine, it, it, it's the doctrine of men. There's nothing like blood of sprinkling. There's nothing like it in the New Testament. And there is nothing like feet washing in the New Testament. Feet washing was Jesus teaching the disciples how to humble themselves and serve others. That's all. There's no mystery about feet washing. None at all whatsoever. However, you know, if you get my teachings and you begin to listen to them and my books, all of them are doctrinal and they will bring you to a place of understanding clearly that there's nothing specific about feet washing other than an example 
that Jesus demonstrated on how the disciples ought to serve one another. Still in the Americas, let's cross over to the southern part of America where, okay, so still in the north, we go to Canada and um, Fabrice, uh, Kevin, writes from Winnipeg and he says, thank you so much, Daddy, for feeding us the most delicious, fantama glorious meal. <laughs> Daddy, why were Adam and Eve ashamed of their nakedness after eating the fruit? Why did they realize they were naked after eating the fruit? Well, again, you must realize that the, the story is not all literal. There are also metaphors. And the, 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 the shame there is the shame that comes to a man in sin. The shame that comes to a man because sin comes with shame. Whether you are naked or not physically, once you are in sin, it has embarrassment and mockery and shame. Bible says sin is a mocker. It mocks. So that is the shame that Adam found himself. Even though the nakedness was used as a symbol to communicate the reason for the shame. But sin actually exposes you. You know, it exposes you to the devil and it makes you vulnerable to the devil and it brings shame and mockery and regret to the sinner. Okay, we cross over to South America in Bolivia precisely where Melin, who says is uh, one of Papa's uh, fans on Facebook, she has a battery of questions and I'll learn to take them one by one. Says Papa, number one, does God forgive sins? God forgives sins in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Papa, when he forgives, does he forget? When he forgives, he's totally deleted as if the man never sinned ever. Totally. So, Emelin wants to know, Papa, if what you have said is so, and I know it's so, why have I not been blessed if God has forgotten my sins? Well, I don't know what you mean by blessing now. Because if what you mean by blessing is car and house and money, then you're looking for something else. You're not looking for Jesus. Because Jesus didn't come to give you car and house and money. Before Jesus came, people had cars and houses and money. So that's not why he came. He came to save man from sin. If you want car, house, and money, you've got to learn how the world system operates. You've got to learn how the system of business in the world operates. You've got to learn how the system of politics operates. You've got to learn how the system of all the different ways of making money operates. And they make services available and strategically position yourself where you too can provide value and services to your society and make money so you can have the cars and houses and what everybody else has. That's why cars and houses are not exclusive to Christians because that's not the blessing you get in Christ. The blessing you have in Christ is the forgiveness of sins, righteousness, justification, peace with God, acceptance, authority, and all that Christ has provided. And Brother Paul calls them spiritual. So that's what it is. So you don't use material things to measure your spiritual relevance. That is corruption. The Bible says there are people who say gain is godliness. And it says those people are destitute of the truth. It says they are destitute of the truth. And it says from such people run away. Because the truth will be contentment. Godliness with contentment is great gain. That means our gain is that we have found Christ. Our gain is that we have found Christ and we are found in Christ. I hope that helps. Okay, the last um, entry that's um, from Emelin in Bolivia uh, has um, the second leg. The last leg now is, Papa, I need prayers in the following areas. One is healing. Number two is deliverance from spirit husband and eating in the dream regularly. And number three, fruit of the womb. All right, you don't need deliverance from spiritual husband because it's nothing like spiritual husband. <laughs> you don't need deliverance from it. Let me recommend for you a book that will help you. Complete Bible Deliverance. It's a book I wrote. If you email our office and order for it, Complete Bible Deliverance. I can, I can agree with you for the fruit of the womb for a miracle, and I can also agree with you and pray for you. You know, what was the first one? I've forgotten um, the first that's one. That's the fruit of the womb. Yeah, we can believe God with you for the fruit of the womb. Fruit of the womb healing and then um, deliverance. Okay, that's all. Yeah, we can pray for the fruit of the womb and for healing for mm. you. If you're having bad dreams and evil dreams, it means you're not spending enough time in the word of God to renew your mind. If you start concentrating a lot of time to study and to meditate on the word of God, the word of God will start changing your subconscious experiences and all those stupid things will be a thing of the past. Father, we pray for your daughter right now. We rebuke sickness. We rebuke infirmity. Satan, get your hands off in the name of Jesus. Amen. Wherever you are right now, there's no distance. Receive healing for your body. Receive healing for your body. And we pray right now for a miracle 
in the area of the fruit of the womb. We pray for a miracle. Receive a miracle for both you and your husband. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Okay, Papa, Amen. we've done three continents. Let's come back to Nigeria. No, is that? Okay, let's come back to Nigeria. We'll go to Bielsa next. D. Olorogun says, Papa, what's the difference between grace and truth? Grace and truth is actually not grace and truth. That's what we call the Kai rule of Bible interpretation, which means that when you see the word and, it's not always a conjunction. It can also be an explanation. In that context, in the original Greek lexicon, it is grace which is the truth. Grace is the truth because grace is Jesus and Jesus is the truth. So there are not two things. It's the same thing. Okay, somebody writing in now says, Papa, for obvious reasons, I would like to remain anonymous and so we allow him says my fiance wants a white wedding but i don't want it what do i do sir it's a non-essential both the white wedding and the lack of it they are not important they are not as important as you and her whether you have a white wedding or you have a traditional wedding or you have a casual wedding or you just have a pastor pray over you doesn't change anything like i've told you marriage is not determined by white wedding marriage is determined by the parents once your parents have handed you over to each other, you get your pastor to bless you, you are ready to start living your life. It's important. So you, both of you need counseling. You need to talk to your pastor to make you see that those things don't really matter. Another anonymous entry, I thank God for the good works you are doing, Papa. If Adam did not sin, would Jesus have died and how would the world have been? If Adam had not sinned, Jesus would have still died because the only way sons will be born to God will be through the death of Jesus. John 12, 24, except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it will remain the only begotten son. But when it dies, it will become the first begotten from the dead. And through that, he will now bring many sons unto glory. So whether Adam sinned or not, Christ will have still died to produce sons to the father. Brother Joshua is in Biajua in Cross River State, just next door. Sir, it is said that a man would live for 120 years but you said the other day that man has a chance to live as long as he wants. Is God a liar? That scripture wasn't talking about long life on earth. It was talking about the long suffering of God in the day of Noah. It took 120 years of Noah preaching. And people didn't believe Noah until the ark was closed. So the 120 there was not a promise of how long you will live on earth. It was the years of God's long suffering for people to be born again, to accept salvation in the days of Noah. Papa, from Cross River State, let's cross over to Abia State, Abba specifically, where testimony rights. Can you explain what Hebrews 9.12 means? Because there seems to be something I'm missing. Hebrews 9.12. 9, 9 verse, verse 12. 12. All right, let me find it in my Bible quickly. I'm almost there. Hebrews chapter 9, 12, 9 verse, 12. verse 12. It says in Hebrews 9.12, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. What he's saying is he's retiring the operation of the law where they were offering animal sacrifice. By his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So what's the question? Yes, yeah, so he doesn't understand Jesus, that. Jesus paid the price for us and he rose from the dead and that was the end. There's no other sacrifice for sins. What Jesus did was more than enough for life for a million lifetimes. That's what he's telling you. That when he rose from the dead, he didn't die anymore. He appeared in the holy place. And today the holy place is your heart. Where Papa, you're born again and where he lives. Papa, I take this great question, I think. But um, fortunately, the sender doesn't leave his or her name. According to Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, someone has to hear the gospel. He has to believe it in his or her heart and confess Jesus as Lord with his mouth. How then, Papa, do the deaf and dumb receive salvation? The same way the deaf and dumb express themselves. How do they express themselves? The deaf and dumb have ways of expressing themselves, either by sign language or body language. So when they believe the gospel too, they express their faith. It doesn't have to be verbal words. It will be in the same way that they communicate. Okay. Thank you for the insight and illumination that your teachings and explanations of God's word bring to us and the globe generally. It has really, really transformed my life. May God bless you real good. I'm Nathan. I'm writing from a back road district in Uyo, Akwaibum State. You said um, the other day that nothing came from heaven except even man, 
except only Jesus. My question, in James 1, 17, King James Version, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And Colossians 1, uh, whether they be thrones, so not dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him or for him. So how can you reconcile these scriptures with what you said? Does it mean that when God created man in Genesis 1, 26, man wasn't the concept of God, or better still, that man wasn't in the mind of God, that is of heaven, making man originating from heaven in context, they say? Genesis 1, 26 was God's plan of Jesus being his image through which other men will become his image, which means automatically every human being is not the image of God. Every human being is not the image of God. Jesus is the image and likeness of God. You only become the image of God when you are born again. I can give you a scripture to help you. Genesis chapter 5 verse 2. Quickly, Genesis, I'm reading for you. Genesis chapter 5 verse number 2. You will see that in Genesis chapter 5 verse 2, it says, male and female created them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day that they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image. This is not the image of God and this is not the likeness of God. This is Adam's image and Adam's likeness in the fallen state. So the real image and likeness of God is Jesus because that's what the New Testament teaches, which is the revelation of the Old Testament. So the revelation of the Old Testament, which is the New Testament, tells us that Jesus is the express image of God. So since Jesus is the image of God, it means that Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 was the prophecy or the revelation of Jesus by Moses that Jesus was going to come and become the image of God. And when you believe in him, you too, you become the image and the likeness of God. It's coming very close to 7.30 to the minute in you, Nigeria. We're coming to you from Africa. And um, just so, so good to be doing this from the global headquarters of Power City international and um, we're just taking the question and answer session papa is here with me dr ebel damina so so nice doing it with him papa will go next to europe again and then this time we land in italy okay hope writes to us the papa had a daughter as a teenager the man i had the daughter with um, and i were not together as the father of the child yes and then um, he's now late unfortunately and i raised this girl as a single mother my daughter did not want to recognize her, did not accept her. Now, she's 25 years old and she's about to get married. Papa, should I inform them that she's about to get married? I need your advice, please. By all means, inform them, inform everybody. You know, eventually, at the end of the day, the girl knows who her loyalty belongs to. But to fulfill all righteousness. Put it in the teaching ministry. What then is the difference among these ministry gifts? Or is there no difference? The, Are they just titles with the same function? The difference is in their function. The apostle is the one sent out. The prophet is the seer, the one that operates gifts of the spirit that has to do with discernment and all of that. The evangelist is the guy who goes out for crusades and reaches out to the lost. And uh, in reaching out to the lost, the evangelist works the miraculous. Because the miraculous in crusades is like a, a bell you're ringing for people to come and get the word. And then, of course, the pastor's function is to oversee the church and teach the church. This is this will make it easy for you, my five fingers. The apostle can touch all fingers. The apostle, the prophet, the warning finger, the evangelist, the tallest finger that can get to where other gifts cannot get to, to preach the gospel. The pastor, the love finger where you put your wedding ring. And the teacher, the last finger that can clean your ear, takes care of wrong doctrine. So, you can use that to know the functionality is what makes the difference. Praise Tripoli, Libya. And... Um she begins by saying, Papa, that she's facing a difficult time out in Libya because the people are Muslims and are against the word Jesus is Lord or Jesus is God. Please, I need explanation. Uh, talk to me more, Papa, about Christ as the word of God. Wow, that's a whole Bible study you want from me. So my advice, get all my teaching materials on the misunderstood God, knowing God in Christ. It's a whole series of many hours of teaching. And then I have a book that will help you. That book is called Revelation Knowledge, Knowing God in Christ. These are materials that will equip you to be able to confront the people. In Endurance is in Coventry, the United Kingdom, gesticulating for me to come. But I wouldn't leave Africa, where I am still in uh, Tripoli. I wouldn't leave Africa because I still have two more males uh, to treat from Africa. So I go to... 
I've given up my will. I could die any, any, any death. Come and take me. That's what he meant. Simple. Okay. So we can go now to Botswana and uh, my what a name. I, I need to take time to pronounce his name. Take your time. Onkara Bile Mansane, right from Botswana. So I can see what we dealt with in the service is what in the church world they call replacement theology. Those who label us replacement theologians, we are saying the church has replaced ancient Israel. When they bring up Romans 11, specifically verse 15, for if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? All those mountains where a lot of Nigerians used to go and die because they have never climbed mountain before. And all of that, you'll be involved in all kinds of things. The truth of the gospel is, Jesus said, you shall neither in Jerusalem nor in this mountain worship. The time cometh when true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Israel has totally lost its place. Since Jesus died and rose from the dead, he rendered Israel useless where the determining factor of salvation is concerned. Today, there's no more Jew, there's no more Gentile. Jesus has broken down the middle wall of partition. There's a kind of humanity that never existed before. Stay with the series because we're going to be dealing with it in the course of this teaching. I already started. this please well enjoy your name and endurance and don't look for how to change it just be who you are what about people who answer different kinds of strange names and they are still successful and they are still doing well they are not even born again they are doing very well they answer very funny names names like stone names like plate names like spoon you know funny funny stuff and they are still successful don't be superstitious be grounded in the knowledge of christ don't be superstitious Okay, I, you know, Africa is our home. We need to come back. By the way, if you are listening to us on radio, just take note of these numbers, um, plus 234 806 800 plus 234 You'll be calling us shortly in another, about the quarter to the top of the hour, I'll be taking calls. But you can also do us a quick text message on plus 234-708-501-4746. Plus 234-708-501-4746. Four seven four six. So back in Africa, Papa, and in Cape Coast, Ghana, there is John who says, Papa, you are blessing your generations. Why do people use greetings to discriminate against their, uh, other, uh, other human beings? It, for example, Shalom. Well, I mean, it's, it depends. I mean, it doesn't mean anything. You know, try to be as human as possible. When you relate with people, try to come down to their level. Don't look at people and be speaking in tongues. And you know, they don't even know what you're talking about. You're just putting them off. Mm. You must understand how to be as, you know, to, to be all things to all men. So you can also be a blessing to people. Don't scare people. Don't intimidate people. Okay, still in Ghana. Uh, my name is Pastor Benjamin Gunap. I'm here in Ghana. I really want to appreciate you, sir, for obeying Jesus. You've been, you've been a blessing to my life and ministry. I've been following you since 2016, and it's always been a great experience in the word of his grace. Papa, I would like you to know that you are well known in the northern part of Ghana, especially because other youth, uh, youth pastors and I preach Christ all over the place. But some churches, he goes on to mention their names, we're not going to do that here, have descended on us. They, they, but the more they do, or only that the more they do, the more we prevail. Many more are getting saved and coming to light. Now, my question concerns Israel. I know that everyone has to accept the gospel now. Romans 11, 26. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it's written. They shall come out of Zion, the deliverer, and shall turn away on godliness from Jacob. Papa, some clarification. Well, again, remember Brother Paul was using a figure of speech, using Israel as a type to show that by virtue of the death of Christ, salvation will be offered to everybody. That's just what it meant. Okay, um, let's go to South Africa, Cape Town. Good evening, Mr. Bush, and um, good evening, Papa, Dr. Ebel Damina. My name is Pastor Simbisai Sibanda. I'm communicating from Cape Town in South Africa. Surely I'm getting more clarity on the Word of God through your teachings, sir. My question is about Melchizedek. The Bible in Hebrews 7, 1 to 4, describes him as the priest of the Most High God, king of righteousness, <clears throat> excuse me, and king of peace, without father, without mother, without genealogy, 
genealogy, um, having neither, neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God. That, that, word, like, that mm. word like, that mm. word like, already explains the whole thing. It's it means like. it's, yeah, not the it's real like, thing. it's not the real thing. So it was a figurative expression of the priesthood of Jesus. Mm. That's why Jesus is made a priest like unto Melchizedek. Okay, so he says, can he assist me on this issue? Because it seems like it's, it shows that he was human. He was not human. And Mr. Bush, if you observe, you will see that because he was still dealing with Christ as the pre-incarnate. Mm. If you observe, you will see that the, the features there are the features of Christ. No beginning, no end, no father, no, no mother. Melchizedek was the king of Jerusalem. Yeah. He was a physical king used as a type mm. to reveal the priesthood of Jesus. Simply that, nothing more. Okay, Papa, let's move to still in South Africa, East London. East London, by the way, is part of South Africa. And my name is um, Swemyam Simamkele. And I just want Papa to talk to me because he said that sin was only imputed after the law of Moses. Um, then what about the case of the flood in Genesis and the fire that destroyed Sodom? Was that not because of their sin? Please help on this purpose. Well, again, remember the of Sodom and Gomorrah. It was not sin that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. It was not homosexuality that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. It was simply the fact that they rejected the gospel that was preached to them for many years. And that gospel was the gospel of his son, faith in Christ. The same thing with Sodom and Gomorrah. And those two cities were used as a type to explain what will happen at the end of the world. That's why when Jesus came, he said, like it was in the days of Noah, like it was in the days of Noah, Noah preached and the people did not believe until the flood came. So shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. So Sodom and Gomorrah and the world of Noah were, were figurative explanations of what will happen at the end of the world. Papa from South Africa, we're heading back to Nigeria on route Cameroon where Barrett is waiting. Says, warm greetings in the much less name of Jesus. I've been greatly blessed by your teaching ministry. Dr. Sir, I wish to ask a few Bible questions for some clarity. One, what did Peter mean in 1 Peter 4, 6, where he talks about the gospel being preached to those who are dead, and also in verse 17, where he talks about judgment beginning in the house of God? Well, what did it really mean? Well, first of all, I, I like to read it. First yeah, Peter, sure. so that I can give you First Peter 1, very four, clear. 4, 6. First Peter 4, 6. All right, 1 Peter, Peter 4, 4 6. 6. Glory to God. First Peter, Peter 4, 4 6. 6. Okay, I've seen it. 4, 6 says, um, and for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Now, if you read the pretext, the pretext, the pretext, it was talking about uh, Christ suffered for us, that we no longer should live unto ourselves, for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, where they think it strange who shall give account to him that is ready to judge and for this cause was the gospel preached to them that are dead dead in sins dead in sins the gospel was brought to them so that they can believe and come alive to god all right then it now comes to verse verse what four that is four six yes six. i finished with six okay no so if you're going to the pretext was five so the post text should be seven yes he now says judgment will begin from the house of god which is verse 17. Mm. So, the judgment that will begin from the house of God there is talking about persecution. Because in verse 16, he says, Yet if a man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin, meaning persecution. Believers will be persecution for their faith, persecuted for their faith in Christ and for the gospel that we preach. That's all he was talking about. Okay, Papa, still from um, Barrett in Cameroon, what did he mean? By the righteous being scarcely saved, First Peter four seventeen, and also who is he really addressing in Second Peter two twenty? Uh, these Christians who lost the, are they, are, is he referring there to Christians who lost their salvation? If not, is it therefore possible for an unbeliever to have a pignosis, which is the word used there for knowledge? That is First Peter two twenty. Yes, First Peter four seventeen first. Okay, First Peter four seventeen. When he says the righteous are scarcely saved, what he's saying is. There, there may not be even many Christians that will not be persecuted. That's what he means by scarcely. Mm. Meaning that persecution will come at almost all of us. It will be very difficult to find a Christian that is genuinely saved that will not be persecuted. That's what he meant. Okay. In one of the soterias, Papa, you talked about John addressing several groups of people in the, in the book of Revelation. One that caught my attention was the group um, who had resolved to apostasy. 
What is the result for a Christian drawn back? A similar example is found in 1 Thessalonians 2.3. What day and what f uh, falling away is he referring to? Kindly throw more light. Again, remember in the book of Revelation, when he was talking about apostasy, he wasn't talking about individuals. He was talking about the churches. And he said, if they do not repent from the doctrine they were preaching, their candle light will be removed. And most of those churches are no more in existence. Then when he talked about believers, he said, to him that overcome it. So there was a difference between the church and the believer. Believer, to him that overcome it, means to him that is born again. Because that same revelation was written by John. In 1 John chapter 5, he said, who is he that overcome it? But he that believeth that Jesus is the son of God. So in Revelation, there were two categories. Individuals who were overcomers and the church that was in apostasy because they allow wrong doctrines to be preached in those churches. So that's the difference in the book of Revelation. There was another question. I no, forgot. Papa, I think that's all. Okay. He, he went on to talk about the First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Yes, sir. I can quickly read that and explain yeah. to you. First Thessalonians two, cha chapter 2, two verse 3. Verse three. Mm. First Thessalonians 2, 3 says, for our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God which trieth our hearts. He was just talking about the gospel, that we are not preaching out of deception. And when you don't preach out of deception, it means you are preaching the truth of the gospel. You are not compromising the message. That's what he's talking about. Okay, Papa, from Cameroon, I'm, I need to fly to you. Um, right now, we have an international airport, but um, no, no direct flights from Cameroon to, <laughs> to you. So I head to Abuja, right. where Prince is waiting, says thank you. By the way, you can start bringing those phone calls. Thank you for the ongoing teaching so far. So much realignment going on in my head, Papa, and Prince in Abuja. My question is, what did Abraham receive the gospel? How did, in what way did Abraham receive the gospel? If no man has ever heard God's voice at any time, according to first, um, John 1, 18. We didn't say no man has heard God's voice. We only said no, no man, man has seen the God. visible That's appearance of God. Of God. Abraham, right. they had God's voice in mediums, revelations, dreams, visions, and all of those mediums. That's why the Old Testament is called progressive revelation. So yeah, he had the voice. Okay. Papa, first caller is on the line tonight. Many thanks for joining us. Hello. Hi, yes, go ahead. Your name, where are you calling from? Go ahead. Oh, this is Diabas. Okay, go ahead, Diabas. And I'm calling from this daughter. I don't have a question. I'm calling to say thank you to Papa and just say I for everything he's doing. My friend and I are watching daughter. Okay, she's yeah, just... this is Jackie. I'm also calling to say thank you to Papa. That's for another caller. That seems like another caller. The calls are clashing. I think she said she was just calling to say thank you. Yeah, sure. Fantastic. Yeah, sure. Okay. Chibweze is in Uyo and says, I'm a believer who commits what is written in Revelation 28 um, to inherit the kingdom of God since our salvation is by faith in Christ. I don't understand that, so I, may, I make progress and come to this anonymous entry. Says, uh, can you please explain your response to a question asked about the eating of food prepared by Muslims or other unbelievers during their festivals in the light of 1 Corinthians 10, 19 to 23, paraphrased scripture says in verse 20, things sacrificed by Gentiles are sacrificed to idols. Kindly throw more light on that. And uh, he goes on to write a long, long thing about, um, you know, there was this question about uh, Muslims serving food to Christians yes, should yes, people yes. eat. You know, I think that's just what Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 4, Brother Paul says, as concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols. We know, that's critical, that knowledge, that an idol is nothing in the world. And that there is none other God but one. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lots many. But to us, there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. How be it? There is not in every man that knowledge for some with conscience of an idol. See, so it's, it's not saying you shouldn't eat it, but if you don't have knowledge enough to know that there is nothing in that food, don't eat it. But if you know better, Paul says, even me, I can eat meat sacrificed to idol, but because of the weak, I will not eat it if they are there, mm. so that I will not cause my brother to stumble. Wow, so fantastic. it's not fantastic. There's another caller on the line. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Hello. 
Thank you for joining us. Good evening. Where are you calling from? Good evening. Go ahead. Okay, I'm calling from you. My name is Joseph. I've been following up investment for some time and I've been hearing a message on the radio and the television. Please, they have said that the knowledge of God is progressive. And then, even in the New Testament, he said that the knowledge of God is progressive. He went on to but what he said that Peter made a mistake in his pronouncement that led to the death of Ananias and his wife. So I want to say that is there no possibility that in the message he is teaching now, there is no room for correction that he may, he may not be making mistakes that someone may need to correct him tomorrow when the first thing was due to the grave. Well, again, you cannot, you cannot talk about progressive revelation when we have the complete Bible. The complete Bible means we have all the truth. The Bible says when the Holy Spirit is coming, he will guide you into all the truth. Now, so to avoid that correction, to avoid that mistake, that is why we explain the Bible contextually. Once you stay with the text and allow the Bible explain itself, you will have no problem. Where you will have problem is if you don't know how to interpret and if you don't know how to stay within the context of the Bible, then you will have problems. So, that's my response to your question. Okay, Papa, there is um, a key question here. We already answered this, but it's back. But before I get to that, there's another call on the line. Hello. Are you there? Okay. So, um, it's, it's, Jesus talked about communion. Paul also talked about, um, t uh, Paul stole the Corinthians that they are, uh, they are sick, weak, and die because they dishonor it. However, some of your teachings seem to say that communion is not important, despite that it was introduced in the New Testament. What's your view? I think there's a question. Maybe after Yes, that. okay. Uh, another caller? Hello? Thank you for joining us. Where are you calling from? Hello, please, Mr. Pimes. Go ahead, go Hello, ahead. Mr. Uh, Mr. Kush, um, please, sir. Evening, bless you. Go ahead. Okay, sir, please, I need to share with you on 4 Corinthians 5 by 5. What does it say? It is for 4 Corinthians 5 by 5, church member to death. Okay, to hand over his church member to death. Are you saying to hand over his church member to death? Well, let me look at it first. Okay. okay, to deliver such a one unto Satan. The word Satan there is not Satan. It's the word accusation in the Greek. It means that if a, and this is a situation where a brother in the church took his father's wife mm. and was coming to church. And brother Paul said, I'm surprised that you people are not even surprised. Before I come, because Paul was not around when it happened, I judge. He said, hand over that brother to Satan. Satan there means to accusation. That is, don't protect him. Since people are talking against his behavior, allow people to talk against it so that he will know that something is wrong. He says, hand him over to accusation so for the destruction of the flesh, not his flesh. The flesh means that mindset that caused that behavior. He said, but his soul is saved. And after a while, Brother Paul said, receive him back, for we are not ignorant of the devices of the devil. Our last caller tonight, hello. Is this last caller there? Okay. Papa, this one is long. comes from Zambia, and I'm going to take it. I take my time to take it. Ebel Chibingo is writing from Chingola in Zambia. This caller. Hello. 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 Good evening, sir. Thank evening. you for joining us. Where are you calling from? My name is Anita Charles. I'm calling from Italy. Wow. Italy. Go ahead, ma'am. Um, Dr. Damina, God bless you, God increase you, because um, I've been following you for a while and I've done a lot of um, on many and many, and I want to say God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so she just called to say God bless oh, you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm, I want in my media ministry, Papa, to get to that level. People call me from all over the world and just say... They're already you. calling you, Mr. Bush. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They're already uh, calling you, calls. but 27 years is not... <laughs> <buff -off. laughs> Papa, I'm done with calls and just have less than five minutes to go. Yes. I thank God for you, Papa, in my life and for your teachings. They're marvelous and we learn so much. 
my parents, Papa Stunch Catholics, who follow everything to the letter. Um, please explain to me if Mary is of, is of any significance to our work of Christ. Some say she is a mediator, others say she prays for us sinners, but through your teachings, Papa, like the real Christmas, you explained very well. I'm now the black sheep of the family because of following your teachings, Papa. I've even stopped going to my church because of the wrong doctrines I see. Secondly, if Jesus is God, then did God betray himself on the cross? Third, Explain Sabbath and the eating of unclean foods. Now, people nickname me Damina because I always listen to you, Papa, from everywhere in, in Zambia. Abel, Chibingo, Damina, I in see. Chingola, Zambia. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Praise God. Well, that's good. Keep yeah. preaching it. Mm. Now, um, Mary. Mary doesn't play any part in the gospel because Mary was just a, 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 an instrument that Jesus used to come out. That's all. In fact, if you observe, Mary's blood was not needed in the conception because Jesus was born not of the will of man, nor of flesh, nor of blood. So Jesus just used Mary to come out. And that's why when Mary was thinking too much of herself, Jesus told her, Madam, Madam, I must be about my father's business. Mm -hmm. He tried to make her know that, look, Joseph is not my father. I have a father that you know not of. And remember that Mary herself had to get born again. She had to believe in Jesus. Because on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, Mary was in the upper room praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And she received that. that means, even though Mary gave birth to Jesus, if she didn't believe in Jesus, she would have still gone to hell. Nothing makes her special. Nothing makes her other than the fact that she made herself available to give birth to Jesus. Just like you two have made yourself available for Jesus to live in you forever. You see that? He lived in her for nine months. He lives in you forever. So nothing makes her superior. Moreover, in the New Testament, only the name of Jesus is available for the believer to access God. You pray to the Father in the name of Jesus who lives on your inside. That's the response to Mary. Then he talked about... If, if Jesus is God, why did, so did God betray himself on the cross? Yes, that's, that's what we call it, the riches of redemption. God actually betrayed himself on the cross. Remember, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So for the first time, God walked out of God and God turned his back on God and God walked away from God and allowed God in a man to die. That's what happened. That's why it is he gave him up. He that speared not but gave up. That word gave up actually is the Greek word for betrayal because what God did was he handed over himself into the hands of, of, of his enemies, into the hands of sinners to kill him. That's why to Jewish people, it makes no sense that you say you're God and ordinary human beings are killing you. But the weakness of God is stronger than me. It is only through death that God could have brought many souls to salvation. That's why Brother Paul will now say, had the princes of this world known mm. that it was God coming to die for man, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. That is the love of God expressed towards mankind. That's the depth of the message of salvation. Okay, still from Ebel Chibingo in Zambia. The, the last question will be, uh, explain Sabbath and the eating of unclean food. Sabbath is Jesus. In the Old Testament, Sabbath was a day which signified rest. But in the New Testament, before even the New Testament, when Jesus showed up in the incarnation, they were busy telling him he could not do anything on Sabbath day, which was the rule. And Jesus went and healed on the Sabbath day. And then his disciples were eating on the Sabbath day. So they said to Jesus, what are you doing on the Sabbath day? Then Jesus said to them, the man is not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath is made for man. And I am the Lord of the Sabbath. What Jesus was simply saying, Sabbath was symbolic of me. Now that I have arrived, Sabbath is retired. That's why when you receive Jesus, you enter into the rest of God. Because Sabbath now is your relationship with God. It is called rest in Christ Jesus. Papa, we have 30 seconds. We must squeeze in this question from Essex in the United Kingdom. Comes from Temitokwe. Um, says his focus is Exodus 4, 24 to 26. But it says the action of Zipporah, um, prevented Moses' death or the circumcision on her son? Well, you know, that scripture is actually an assumption where it says, and God was looking for how to kill Moses. <laughs> how will God be looking for how to kill Moses? So that's an assumption. I think Moses was just very sick and they thought that sickness was God's punishment. It's just an assumption because some of those scriptures have to be well explained. Again, I would recommend for you the Misunderstood God series, part one through Part 1, 2, 3, and 4. It will arm you with understanding where it has to do with Exodus chapter 4, Moses and Zipporah and all of that.
Pastor I.J. Kwere, thank you. Pastor Helen Umana, thank you. Pastor Godisman and wife, thank you. The rest of the Power City cameraman technical team and the 30 Days of Glory Studios in New York, Kwaibum State from the global headquarters of Power City International all join me to wish you good night from Uyo, Nigeria. And back to Papa, my name is Michael Bush. Oh Dr. my goodness, Bethlehem. Mr. Bush, he couldn't, he couldn't be better at all. We <laughs> love you, man. We appreciate you. Thank you everybody is excited about thank you, you online and all over thank the place. You, the feedbacks are fantastic. Thank you. And we appreciate you. And everybody else, we love you. Remember, tomorrow we are live at 6 p.m. as we continue the teaching on the great salvation that is ours in Christ Jesus. We still continue examining Jesus, the man. It's very important. Invite people, invite friends, both on radio, on social media, on television, Kingdom Life Network, wherever you're watching, and all our house campuses, and all our house centers. We love every one of you. It's a joy to spend time serving you the grace of God through the teaching of God's word every day. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day and be blessed. Amen. Goodbye. Goodbye. Pray. Jesus is the exclusive custodian. Jesus is the sole carrier. Jesus is the perfect imprint, the pleroma, the corporate headquarters of the Godhead. Jesus is the executive carrier of the Father. So if you don't know Jesus, you don't know the Father. You can never know the Father outside of God. Church in the air and church online. Join Drs. Abel and Rachel Deming as he brings you sound Bible study through the month of July at 30 Days of Glory 2020. Exegetically examining the fundamentals of the Christian faith. Salvation in Christ. Date from 5th of July to 2nd of August 2020. Time 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. from Mondays to Saturdays, 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. on Sundays. Book up live on our Facebook and YouTube page and also live on Kingdom Life Network TV, on my TV or Strong Decoder and live on Comfort FM or Yo by 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Mondays to Saturdays and 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Sunday. Also listen to and rebroadcast of the services daily on XL FM 106.9 or Yo. 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. daily and live on Inspiration FM 105.9 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. daily. Be a part of this program. Don't miss it.